I'm Katrina Jameson. I'm the Deputy Director of the University of California San Diego Cancer Center and also the Director of the Sanford Stem Cell Clinical Center and very pleased to be able to be here today to talk about highlights of the American Society of Hematology meeting in 2019. There have been some fundamental advances in the field of myeloproliferative neoplasms that make this year's meeting very exciting, including the recent approval of a JAK2 FLT3 inhibitor called fedratinib. That has provided an opportunity for patients to receive this drug in the first line setting and also if they happen to be resistant or intolerant to other therapies. So that's an exciting advance. In addition, combination therapies have started to come to the fore as being particularly effective for intermediate two and high risk myelofibrosis, uh, for example, ruxolitinib and a drug called Navitaclax, which is a BCL2, BCLX antagonist, looks like it's starting to make essential inroads into the major pathogenesis of the disease that involves fibrosis, or in other words, scarring of the bone marrow. So these exciting developments are coming on the new advances on the epigenomics as well as the transcriptomics front. And in future years, we anticipate that we'll be able to risk stratify patients, not just by their mutation status, as we take into account at the National Conference of Cancer Network panel meetings yearly, but also their transcriptomic or RNA changes. So there are more studies now showing that changes in how we splice our genes are as important in changes in how we mutate our genes. And I think this will pre provide a whole set of new biomarkers, but also help us to identify novel therapeutic targets. This is happening already with reports of a splicing modulator in acute myeloid leukemia. And that is going to have a very important impact on patients who find themselves in the quandary of having high risk myelofibrosis. So we're really excited about the possibility of being able to predict and prevent progression of high-risk myelofibrosis to acute myeloid leukemia and use essential targeted agents that target the stemness capacity of those cancers. So in other words, they hijack stem cell properties like the ability to clone yourself or self-renew. So those are important advances that will be described at this meeting. And I think that what we'll start to see is a much more refined method for evaluating risk at the individual level. So we'll be doing personalized genomics, personalized transcriptomics, or in other words, looking at RNA changes, including splicing and being able to target those changes directly, as well as looking at bed inhibitors that are epigenomic uh, modifiers. So the field is getting nicely scientific. It started as the poster child for understanding how cancers evolve, and now the, the field is getting deeper as our tools to study real human disease get even more potent, and I think this will help us to really prevent progression and ultimately, hopefully, aim for an operational cure for myelofibrosis, where patients are free and clear of any signs or symptoms of disease and may be able to take a drug holiday. That is likely to be somewhat in the future, but certainly something to strive for in this field. And with the advances at this year's ASH, uh, we think this is a possibility.